Well, hello. Um, hey, uh, it's time for our third project, and um, I thought that I would give you a little introduction to it. It requires some background um, in order to be able to execute it properly. It's um, engineering design project number three. It's our third project because um, even though we didn't get to evaluate the first project, it was still our first one, which was the slave, the slave bot. Um, so today's uh, introduction is really just to get some background and um, we're going to talk about a piece of equipment that is used in making paper. Um, and um, this redesign took place quite a while ago when I was in my other life as an um, engineer working uh, on the number one paper machine here in St. Catharines for Kimberly Clark. Um, so uh, let me give you some background. So I'm just going to read the first paragraph and kind of add to it a little bit. Um, below you'll see a sketch right here of um, the original baffle plate uh, which was used on number one machine. We had made um, very fine paper on number one machine, machine glaze paper used in uh, a lot of food industries, so food wraps. Um, the idea of this um, baffle plate is that it takes fiber and water and um, creates vortexes and uh, makes it speed up that mixture and then that forces it to mix up a little better um, and it's done by forcing that uh, a, a lot of volume of liquid through a bunch of small tubes um, and then they become more homogeneous which means that they just um, become uh, more uniform in their mixture um, and we end up with a nice uniform sheet of paper when it is formed out on the head box um, when it comes jetting out of the head box onto the forming wire. I have a series of videos that uh, you're going to watch that uh, explain a little bit more about uh, how paper is made or at least you can kind of see how the paper is made in a continuous sheet. Um, the uh, the original baffle plate, I do have a piece of it, it's right here. I'm just going to slide it into the screen. So um, this is a picture of a section of the original baffle plate. Um, so this uh, baffle plate right here was 112 and a half inches long this way, this raised part. And then the, the side support areas were uh, 114 and a half inches and um, the distance across here is six inches on the raised part from this edge to this edge over here this edge and um, if you go all the way from one edge to the other edge so from here that is to the other end which is over here is eight inches in um, width um, it's got a series of these offset holes and um, these holes that are in this original baffle plate are five eighths of an inch in diameter, the small through holes. And then the other hole area here at the end as it leaves the baffle plate um, is uh, an inch and a quarter uh, wide. But we'll talk about that um, a little bit later on. So, and it's a big thick piece of acrylic. You can see when I hold it sideways here that it is uh, quite thick. Um, this is this top edge from here down to here is one inch and then this from this edge down is one and a half inches. This edge right here has been chamfered. You can see right here it's a 45 degree um, slash along the side. That's to make it so it's not sharp, the finish. And if we slide this down a little bit, this is actually, whoops, sorry about that. Um, if we slide it down a little bit, this is actually a filleted edge right here. So this edge is a 1 16th fillet, and this edge right here is a 45 degree chamfer. If we look from the side, um, so if I look from this view right here, um, this is a little uh, bit of a cord quarter circle here. That's the 16th of an inch fillet, and then you can see this 45 degree slash running along this side here um, and that's a 45 degree chamfer and it's an eighth of an inch um, in its length. All right, great. A couple of things to clean up. So I'm going to move my big chunk of the old baffle plate off to the side and we can talk about uh, a few more details. All 
All right, just positioning everything so it fits in the screen. Okay, so I just mentioned to you that the uh, the old baffle plate uh, and your one you're going to redesign. It's 114 and a half inches long from one end to the other. Um, it's eight inches wide, from top to bottom here, and uh, this lip that runs all the way around it is uh, one inch in width in this direction. Um, and then in terms of, if you look at it from the side view, this area is one inch high. So that's this area in here is raised one inch above the total surface of this other section of rectangular prism, which is one and a half inches thick. So that the total thickness of the baffle plate is two and a half inches. Um, as far as the holes that are in the existing uh, baffle plate, like the old one, the one that you are going to do the redesign on, the old one uh, had uh, three quarters of an inch to the first set of holes, and it's sets of three, which I just showed you on the baffle plate. Um, their diameters are uh, five uh, eighths of an inch uh, for the inside diameter, and then the outside, the big, the bigger diameter at the top is uh, an inch and a quarter in diameter, twice the, twice the diameter. Um, there are 75 sets of these holes, and um, so 225 holes in total and they are one and a half inches away from each other and it's symmetrical it means that the pattern runs the same all the way from one side to the other um, so that's the original baffle plate and um, this is what it looks like if you look at it as a cutout right here um, so each of the holes if you sliced it and looked at it from the side uh, looks like this. It's got a small diameter of five eighths of an inch down here, right here, and out here at the top end, it's uh, one and a quarter. That's the second diameter, um, and um, so in other words, it's the outside or leaving diameter is twice the diameter of the inside diameter. And in our paper machine, uh, we had 2,200 U.S. gallons per minute. So a U.S. gallon is just another measure of volume and obviously per minute. And that volume of liquid was flowing through 225 holes, three sets of 75. And when it goes in here to this area, its velocity, we're going to call it V1. And when it exits over here, right, uh, then its velocity is going to be called V2. And because we double the diameter over here, the velocity goes down by a factor of four. So it's accelerated here and then slowed down by a factor of four, and then it continues into the head box, um, which I'll talk about later. Um, great. So I think that uh, I've talked about pretty well everything on this particular page. It just says here that it just means that the valve plate allows the flow to speed up and then slow down by a factor of four. And the idea is to keep things turbulent, but not too turbulent so that we get a nice uniform sheet when it's made on the paper machine. All right, let's go to the next section. I'm just gonna move that out of the way and uh, this over, slide her back down in place. So, um, you're going to be required to figure out how many holes you need in a new baffle plate and their size in order to get the velocity, the V1 value, to be between 26 and 30 feet per second. Um, and we're going to use 28 feet per second as our target speed as a result. And that 28 feet per second, or the 26 to 30, came about after we consulted with um, uh, a gentleman um, from the US whose company is called Papyrus. And uh, he came and did some work at our machine and determined that that would be the correct speed so that we end up making the nicest sheet um, and don't have fibers all clumping together. Um, so before we do that, it's um, before we do the redesign, it's important that we know what the old velocity is so that you get some idea of um, where we were at before we sped things up to 28 feet per second. Um, the old velocity we knew was a lot slower, um, and obviously that's not good because it doesn't allow the sheet to mix very well, and you end up with what is called a flocky sheet. It just means it doesn't look very uniform. 
All right, here we go. We're going to calculate the old velocity. And if we can calculate the old velocity, then you should be able to calculate the new velocity um, anytime you want by changing the number of hole sizes, excuse me, the number of holes and or the diameter of the holes or area of the holes. All right, first thing we're going to do is convert 2,200 U.S. gallons per minute into feet cubed per second. Um, so that's right down here. So I'm going to move that back up. So um, if we look on here, you'll see that I've taken 2,200 U.S. gallons per minute. I want to get it converted into feet cubed per second. Down here I have the way that we typically convert um, uh, different units from one unit to another in engineering. So we take our uh, amount that we start with, 2200 US gallons per minute, and then we do denominators down here in numerators. So, so obviously it's US gallons per minute, and per minute means it's in the denominator. And uh, we know that a minute has 60 seconds. We also know that if we look it up, and you guys can look it up on the internet, one foot cubed is equal to 7.48 US gallons. So these are the conversion factors. Look, I'm going to cancel away the units. So there's the minutes gone. The U.S. gallons are gone. And we end up with 2,200 times 1 times 1 divided by 60 divided by 7.48. Here, I'll put a bracket around that because you guys are probably confused about that. There was a dot there. Um, and we end up with 4.9 feet cubed per second. So that means that we have 4.9 feet cubed of volume liquid with a little bit of fiber in it moving through all of the tubes um, each second. Now we're going to find out what the flow is through uh, each tube, remembering that there were 225 of them. So we just take the flow through all of the holes and divide it by the total number of holes, 225, and we get 0 0.02178 feet cubed per second through each hole. Um, and just so you know, if you take the volume flowing through any hole and divide it by the area of that hole, and remember the units have to be the same, so in this case we're going to convert to feet squared, so or you know, so everything's the same, so or excuse me, feet. Um, then we will have the velocity through one or each hole in the baffle plate. So let me say that one more time. If I take the volume, there it is right there, right? That's the volume flowing through each hole. And I take the area of that hole and I divide it into that volume. Then I'm going to end up with the velocity through that hole. Super. All right, let's flip over to the next page. And here comes the area of a single hole, which is a very, very small number. First, we're going to start over here. I told you the diameter was 5 eighths of an inch. So if the diameter is 5 eighths of an inch, then the radius is 5 sixteenths of an inch. And that's inches. We have to get it into feet. Otherwise, the conversion is not going to work. So we have to divide that number by 12. And I get a very small number, 5 divided by 192 in feet. So 5 over 192 feet. Tiny, very small. Um, and then I had to take that number and make it an area in feet squared. So pi r squared. So I have to take that 5 over 192 and square it. And I end up with 25 pi over 36,864 feet cubed. That's the area of a single hole, which is very small. All right, and now as a result, I can calculate the velocity in a single tube. In my old baffle plate, 0 0.02178 feet cubed per second divided by 25 pi over 36,864 36, feet squared, and I end up with 10.22 feet per second, which is way too slow for good mixing. So this gentleman that we had, Ahmed Ibrahim and his company Papyrus, said we got to get to around 26 to 30 feet per second. Um, and so we knew, oh, okay, that means that we need to redesign a baffle plate so that the velocity will be sped up. And if we want to do that, we're not going to be able to change the flow. We're going to keep it at 2,200 U.S. gallons per minute. So the only way we can do that is by taking the area of all of the tubes. And if you reduce them by a factor of three, you should end up with around three times the speed. So 
you know, so that's what I wrote down here. So you're going to redesign, uh, you're going to figure out a pattern that will have D1, uh, all of them added up together, their areas, make it so that the velocity flowing through here is going to be between 26 and 30 feet per second. Um, and when you uh, do the new holes in your AutoCAD drawing of your baffle plate, this is the baffle plate, two and a half inches tall, one inch to the first ledge, and then one and a half inches. So this fits into the paper machine. And then the, the flow, oh shoot, I forgot to move that up, my bad. Um, shoot, I don't know if I should say that again, but all right, sorry, I'll say it again because I forgot to move this up. This is the new redesigned baffle plate. It's going to have the new diameter that you're going to figure out. The, that hole is going to go in 1.25 inches into the thick 2.5 inch plate. And then it's going to open up to twice that diameter here, D2. So uh, D2 equals 2 times D1. Um, and uh, that is also one and a quarter inches so that together the whole height is two and a half inches which is the thickness of the baffle plate but again the baffle plate is one and a half inches to this first edge <clears throat> and then the inside rectangular prism is one inch thick um, that top edge all the way around is filleted at a sixteenth of an inch. Remember that's rounded over. And this edge along here is chamfered at uh, eighth inch, 45 degrees all the way around. Um, yeah, so again, the 2200 US gallons are going to be flowing through here. 2200 US gallons per minute. And we want to try and get this speed, this V1, to equal between 26 and 30 feet per second. And this V2 is going to be V1 divided by four. So in other words, if you double the diameter, you reduce the speed by a factor of four. All right, hopefully this background information will help you to figure out uh, you know how to do the redesign. I'm just quickly going to sketch out um, so that you have some idea uh, about the head box. So I'm just quickly going to do a head box for you so that you can kind of see what's going on. So if I have a box like this, it's got a floor, it's got an opening down here, we're going to talk about that in a second. It's got liquid in it um, and there's fiber in here just a bit and water and um, I don't know if you know this or not but if you have a little opening in the bottom here then the liquid here will jet out of here so this is jetting out so if we're looking at the side of the head box, and what we have right here is we have a big roll. We have a wire that runs like this. And when this water and fiber jet out of here, they land on the wire like this. And then all the water drains through. There it is draining through and we get a sheet left on here. So a little sheet of wet paper on here on the wire. So this is rolled, rotating this way. And over here we have the header that we just uh, talked about. So here I'll actually draw it going into the machine. So here it is. Looks like this. And then we have some piping here. So it looks like this. And the liquid is coming in through the big pipe. 
and heading up into the paper machine, 2200 US gallons per minute. It's going in this way, and then it goes through the little holes. Look, so little tiny holes, and then it's going to go in some bigger holes. Tiny hole, bigger hole, tiny hole, bigger hole. And you can do them in any pattern that you want. So in here, and then it mixes up, we'll create some turbulence, and then we end up with all these little fibers and water in here. So the amount of liquid flowing in through here is the same as the amount of liquid flowing out through here. And this is called a head box. And I think in the videos you'll see uh, how that works. And this is what you're redesigning. So this is the baffle plate. This is what you are making. And again, um, I'll just bring it up one more time. Here it is, right here. Uh, here's the old baffle plate. So one more time, swing it into position here. So this is the old one. You can see it's got all the holes in it. Um, and again, it's 112 inches this way and that way of this top plate and then 114 and a half inches for the outer plate in in this direction this direction and then width wise it's eight inches all the way across from one side to the other and it's six inches here so again we have a one inch lip all the way around and it would go you know all the way from one end to the other okay and you can actually see one more time the edge so this is one inch thick right here from here to here and excuse me one and a half inches I apologize and then this part here from this edge down to here is one inch uh, thick okay um, thanks look there's the holes there they are again there's just another shot of them going through the baffle plate all right thank you